Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're going to be talking about collections. Before we get into that, I'm going to just direct your attention to this graphic here on screen that shows where we're at in our goal. At the time of recording this video, I've got about 26,000 subscribers, which is great. Thank you everyone for participating and subscribing to the channel. Helps me reach my goal. We are not there yet, so my goals are as follows. We want to hit 30,000 subscribers by September with the ultimate goal of hitting 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you can, definitely help out the channel by subscribing and ringing that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of my uploads and, uh, you know, help me reach my goal much quicker. But with all that in mind, what we're going to be talking about today is the collector roll, which many consider to be the single best way to make Red Dead Online cash money, dollar dollar bills. What I'm going to be talking about today specifically are the five best and then also the four worst collections to grind out on a daily basis if you want to make lots and lots of money as a collector. So let's just dive on in and start it off with the good ones. So I should press preface this by saying that these are not necessarily in any order, so I'm going to go through the five best sets. They're not ranked from worst to best or best to worst or anything. They're just good sets. I'll point out what's good about them as I go through each of them individually. So the first one is the American Wildflower set, which, as you can see, is highlighted here on the screen. This set is great for a lot of reasons. For one thing, there are only nine of them that you have to collect, so it's not nearly as big as some of the other sets. You get $155 for turning it in, and these ones are a set location. So I'm going to have that interactive uh, map down in the description so I definitely recommend if you want to make a lot of money using the collector roll to use that map because it shows you the real-time locations of all of the collectibles at once on Red Dead Online and you can filter it take out what you don't want look specifically for certain collectibles it's great for all of that stuff so if you want to collect effectively you're probably going to have to utilize that map like I said the first collection I want to talk about for being a really good one is the flower collection and it's good for a lot of reasons for one thing these ones are set locations so you can use that map it'll tell you exactly where to get each specific flower so it's not going to be random in any way you can easily finish this collection and another reason why this one in particular is so good is just because you can get multiple collections of the American wildflowers each and every day so the collectibles on the map reset every 24 hours and will change locations so every 24 hours you can collect literally almost every single collectible in one day it takes a long time but you could do it if you wanted to but what you can do is target specific collections like the flowers here where you're going to be able to get two or three three of each one each day, meaning that you can do multiple sets. So instead of it only being $155, if you collect all of the flowers on the map, you could maybe make $300 or $450. It's just a great way to make money pretty decently quick, and it's really easy because they will always be where they're supposed to be. So that is the first collection that I definitely recommend grinding out on a daily basis. So the next collections we're going to be talking about are really all four of these uh, tarot card collections. Specifically, the two that I like the most are Pentacles or Pentacles, these ones right here, and the swords and that's just because they have the highest money for doing them but all of these are going to be good ones and so just like the wildflowers they're good for most of the same reason you can complete complete most of these collections on a daily basis so you'll be able to get each collection each and every day if you want they don't require a metal detector they're nice and easy to spot and again they're in set locations so if you look at this suit of swords here you can see i've got 11 out of 14 collected if i want to go find the king of swords tarot card I can just go on the map, select that card, and it'll show me exactly where to get it. So it's very, very easy to complete these collections, and these ones pay even better than the flowers, this one being $286, the pentacles being $287, and then the other two, which are slightly less, are $239 and $240. So all of these pay out pretty decent, they're real easy to collect all of them, they're in set locations so you can target specific cards if you're just missing one of them. They're definitely a great collection to grind out if you want to do collect the collector roll for money i know a lot of people that that's all they do for collectors is they just do the tarot cards they'll go around and collect all four sets of tarot cards every day so uh that is the second out of the good collections next up for the third spot in the best collections we have the family heirloom set now this one is a little bit more there are 15 of these to collect the full set but you do get 292 dollars for completing it and again like the last one like the last ones that we talked about these are all they're going to be set locations it's not random if i want to go find the horsehair brush and uh the boxwood comb and the ebony hairbrush and the metal hairpin to complete this collection all i have to do is use that map go to the specific place where it says these are pick them up and boom i've got the collection again this can be completed in one day most of the time if you really want to it doesn't require a metal detector they're going to be in set locations and you get 300 bucks for turning it in so definitely a great collection to do on a daily basis next we have the bird eggs for the number four spot on the five best collections to do and this it's literally the same reasons as before they're at set locations you can easily collect it at least once a day. Bird eggs 
have an advantage of sometimes certain nests will have between three and five eggs, so you'll automatically have that many collectibles and you won't have to do them all individually. Other than that, it's mostly going to be the exact same as the wildflowers or, or the tarot cards. You just go to the, uh, the location where you need that egg from, get that egg, you've got the full collection. So that is number four. Let's move on to the last of what I consider to be the best uh, collectibles to go after. All right, and so for the number five spot, or actually, if I was going to pick a favorite out of all these, it would be this one just because it's so easy to get these collections. And we're talking about the antique alcohol bottles. So this is another one with only nine items. You get $160.50 for turning it in. And these ones are especially easy to find. So just like the rest of the sets that we've talked about so far, these all have set locations. If you use that map, you can go specifically to get the Scotch Whiskey, which is the only one I currently don't have for this collection. And that is, it makes the set very easy to do. If you just want to go get one set, this one's super easy because it's only nine items and they're set locations. So you can quickly go through, get all your alcohol bottles. Bing, bang, boom, you've got a collection to turn in for 160 bucks. But the reason I like the alcohol bottles probably the best is because of how easy it is to find them. Because you very, very often will loot these off of the corpses of people that you've killed. Just for reference here, you can see in my satchel, I've got eight or nine or ten of quite a few of these. I've only got two Irish whiskey, one old Tom Gin, and then I've got ten London Dry Gin, and I'm obviously missing the Scotch whiskey. Most of these are very common. The old Tom Gin, the Irish whiskey, and the Scotch whiskey are the most rare, but you can use the map to easily find them. For the rest of these, most of these, I've looted off of corpses. These are not things I've collected. I just find them when I loot people after I kill them. This collection is one that I find myself constantly having almost all, if not all, of the bottles in my inventory already. So that is why the the antique alcohol bottles takes the last spot on what I consider to be the best collectibles to go for in this game. So next we're just going to do this section real quick because these ones are bad for all the same reasons. So I'm going to be talking about the four worst uh, sets or types to go for. And uh, they're really going to all be bad for the same reason. So just pay attention and you'll get where I'm going. So the first group I want to talk about are the fossils, the coastal fossils, the oceanic fossils, and the megafauna fossils. These ones are not good sets to go for. They're totally random. It's really hard to target to try to make sure you actually get a full set. Most times you're just going to be finding one or two of the types of fossils. Because of that, it takes a long time to actually get a full set to turn in. Almost all of these are always going to require a metal detector. So if you don't have the metal detector yet, you can't even effectively look for the fossil. I don't waste my time with them. If you want to just start at one end of the map and go all the way through and collect every single thing, then that's fine. Then I recommend going for, you know, literally everything. But if you're trying to target it for effective time use to make money, then I recommend totally avoiding the fossil. Their rewards are decent because they range from $217 on the low end to $288 for a set on the high end. And two of them have seven pieces and one has six. But like I said, because they're random, they don't fill up very quickly. They take a long time to get a full collection. And I think they're a waste of time. The first spot on the worst ones is all three of these fossils. The next spot I want to talk about is lost jewelry. And there are four sets of them with two of them being arguably worse than the others just because they have more items. And these are all the lost jewelry. So lost jewelry bracelets, lost jewelry earrings, lost jewelry necklaces, and lost jewelry rings. Again, these are all going to be random. You go to a spot, you dig it up, and you find a random lost jewelry earring for that set. Again, on these ones, the rewards are actually decent uh, with for the earrings and the rings, respectively, being $364 and $378 to turn them in. So it's actually a decent amount of money, but given the fact that it takes much longer to complete any of these sets because they're totally random, they're not going to be the best. And you're most likely not going to be able to complete a collection of these in a single day. You're going to have to do it multiple days and basically go to every single spot for the lost jewelry to try to complete these sets. Because the way that it decides what piece you find is totally random. It's a random number generated, but they're given different values. So there are certain items in each of these random collectibles that you're much less likely to find. So sometimes it can take multiple days just to complete the set once. And in my opinion, that's a waste of money because you could very reliably complete all of those other sets, the ones I talked about in the best section, every single day. So at the second to last spot, for the worst collectibles to go for, we have the arrowheads. And these ones are going to be bad for the same reason. It has 12 pieces to collect the full set. It's $289 if you turn it in, and they're totally random. So even though the vast majority of these, if not all of them, are not made of metal, so should not be uh, detectable by metal, you do need a metal detector to try to find most of these. So if you have that, you're going to find them. And again, it's going to be a random number generated for which one you pull out of each side. You're going to find yourself pulling out the same couple arrowheads all the time and very rarely finding one of the other rare ones. So again, it's pretty hard to guarantee that you're going to get this collection completed in a single day. Most likely it's going to take two, three, or even more days to try to 
actually get a full set of these arrowheads because one or two of them are going to be a lot rarer than the other ones. So that's why the arrowheads take another spot on the list of collections that I do not recommend going for. And then finally we end up at everyone's favorite, the coins, which are by far the worst set of collectibles to try to go for if you're trying to grind money. The reason these ones are so bad is because this collection is difficult to complete. So it does have the highest reward at $540, but it's also the largest collection set at 15 items. And like all the other ones on the bad list, these are all totally random, so you're going to have to go to the spot, dig it up, and just hope you get the right coin to complete the collection. There's no way to target it. And as you can see, I've literally never found an 1800 gold quarter, and this is coming from someone who specifically went after this set for quite some time because I noticed it had the highest uh, dollar value for turning it in, and every single day I was using this map to go around and collect every single coin, and I've literally never found an 1800 gold quarter. So that's why I gave up on this set, and I definitely recommend that everyone else does as well. I'm not saying don't collect them if you don't find if you find them, or if you're right next to them, don't dig them up. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I'm saying is if you're grinding a collectible set to try to make the most money possible, going after the coins is not the smart way to do it. So that is where we're going to end talking about these collections today. So like I said, just as a recap, if you want to try grinding out collection sets to make lots and lots of money and XP for that, the five best sets are going to be the American Wildflowers, the Tarot Cards, the Family Heirlooms, the Antique Alcohol Bottles, and the Bird Eggs. These all have set locations and can be very easily targeted daily. The worst sets that you're going to want to avoid are the Fossils, the Lost Jewelry, the Arrowheads, and the Coins. They're bigger sets. They take much longer to try to complete, and they're totally random, so there's no way to target them. Like I said, I'm going to have that map linked down in the description, so if you want to start grinding out collections today to make lots and lots of money in-game, that's where you're going to want to start. And like I said, just stick to those good sets, and you'll be richer than you know what to do with in no time. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful, especially for those of you out there looking to make money as a collector. But in any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.